just under 20 minutes. Uh, I do want to reserve some time at the end for mm -hmm. okay. overall discussion. So again, uh, group four, if you can provide your report. Good morning, everybody. I am Rajendra Poda from University of Agriculture Sciences, Tarwat. <coughs> In group four, uh, we had the following members D. Rajaradi, Pradeep Kumar Sharma, Mary House Claus, Michael Macklin, Pritam Nanda, Satyanarayan, and Gaurav Mishra. One more additional member was there, G. Shankar. So, <coughs> the previous speakers have covered many of the issues point by point, all the uh, eight, nine points. Uh, I'm not going to into details of each one of them serially. I'll just make general comments about what happened in our group. Uh, as far as the consortium is concerned, most of us agreed that it's a new step, a paradigm shift in uh, education uh, program, and we need to join and strengthen this movement. Uh, regarding financial sharing, um, many views have been expressed and we also discussed and uh, said that uh, financial resource sharing should be on the basis of 25 to 75 basis uh, between the consortium and the universities or the uh, other agencies. There is one novel suggestion from the group that uh, once the consortium gets going, um, they can prepare projects for uh, external funding from various international organizations to mobilize the resources. There was a discussion regarding uh, membership of the group, whether a national entity, something like ICR, ICA, should represent all the universities, or each individual member or university or institution should be allowed to become a member on its own. There was a difference of opinion here also, you could, uh, uh, just heard. Somebody said ICR can represent all the universities or institutions in the country and become member as one entity or it can be left to be the institution. Another the, the serious constraint that we discussed in the meeting was the national rules and regulations. We have restriction on our programs from the state government because it has its own mandate and for information of the house, it's often thought that ICR is a supreme controller of all agriculture industries. Uh, as far as my knowledge goes, supreme control requires supreme funding also. But if you take the average of funding of all agriculture industries in the country, it is very small amount compared to the state funding. So state governments do have a lot of control over universities and we have to keep that in mind. This follows uh, and applies to all the states, all the SAs. And also there are multiple agencies like MHRD uh, and ICR of course is there. Uh, these will often, uh, you know, we have been experienced put back in any change. For example, somebody said the uh, credit based uh, system. Get, uh, choice based credit system. It's, uh, we cannot think of in the present ICR SA system, but MHRD is thinking. And now MHRD has also developed a program called RUSA, Rastriya uh, Uchitara Abhyan, Shiksha Abhyan. There they are insisting that you should open up your the curriculum system, but uh, agriculture studies are not very so uh, flexible. Then regarding uh, constraints, Uh, one serious problem which has been raised yesterday also by uh, Vice Chancellors that unlike other uh, social sciences and other subjects, agriculture is nature based and is a very dynamic process. Most of the learning happens not by concepts but by skill learning and it requires hands on experience and doing learning by doing. Our apprehension uh, is uh, how do we take into account or how do you account for this in the whole new learning process. Because I'll uh, just give you an example, uh, you can show virtually how uh, meeting happens on the internet, but the, the student or the extension worker has to learn how to milk a cow. This is very, I have been in the field agricultural uh, 
for the last 20 years, I have these experiences. Then regarding uh, protection uh, of the, uh, the rights of the content, some issues were raised, like how to protect rights of the scientist or expert, because content keeps moving from one person to another person, one entity to another entity. How to fix responsibility and also the responsibility rights of the individual scientist or the person who develops content. Then what about the IPR issues? Because IPR is a big issue. IPR is, the regime is very tight in the Western world, but not so in Indian conditions. Uh, most of it is open access. And when somebody raises the question of IPR, intellectual property rights, how to fix up this problem? Another one was uh, a large number of students join agricultural universities, huge number. Um, <clears throat> it's not just enough to teach concepts and also require skill development, which goes beyond this virtual learning. As for the ownership of the content is concerned, it depends on we have to uh, uh, define who develops the content. And also it depends on the nature of the funding, who has helped or has supported financially to develop this content, whether the universities or the consortium. This question was also uh, discussed in the meeting. As for use of the content is concerned, there is no objection. Uh, it's very useful. Uh, it can be used in various training programs, capacity buildings, and also awarding certificates and diplomas only to this section, not degrees. Degree certificate and diplomas can be awarded by the Then uh, one more session was to shift uh, presently as we from the Point of consortium, we think always focus on the the teacher's centric focus should be shifted to learner. Learner has many more constraints or difficulties in, in his own uh, perception or understanding concepts. Our most of our thinking uh, with regard to the content development has to shift from um, the teacher or the you know, to the top. Then. Uh, <coughs> In this whole process of uh, development of this consortium, there are various uh, national, international and uh, local bodies which have their own rules and regulations. Therefore, they need to be uh, wide in consultations among uh, these entities uh, with regard to administration and regulation, with regard to financial dealings and with regard to technology development. Because as somebody says, that our group is so diverse, unlike in other sciences. Agriculture, uh, the sector itself is so heterogeneous, the stakeholders are so from so different backgrounds that we need to focus on the requirements of the uh, various stakeholders. And uh, I conclude uh, by saying uh, one more, uh, my own experience, which uh, I draw from my own experience. I have been a teacher for the last 20 years, 21 years. And out of 21 years, I taught uh, with my own notes and uh, direct interaction with my student friends, students, moving around with them and uh, in field also. But the university uh, shifted to this kind of learning from active boards, powerpoints and uh, other e-learning materials. This is a subjective, of course, it can be de debated. I notice uh, that there is a loss of creativity interest and um, uh, understanding the concepts or internalizing the, uh, the uh, knowledge. The problem is the students or the learners have become passive learners. Earlier there was a bi-directional or engagement, you know, in a very dynamic process, it's dialectical. We, we, uh, teacher learns from students and students it is quite often thought that the student learns from the teacher. But I have grown and I have understood as a student, as I have become student, the teacher, that I learned many things from my students. But in the last four or five years, as I started using these uh, e-learning things, I noticed that lot, there is a lot of creativity, a lot of a loss of interest, and these things. For example, I can tell you, you teach him for one year, one hour, at the end of hour, the ask boy or girl to stand up and say what I said. They cannot, they cannot respond to my question. Because their attention has been diverted, the dependency that I can get PowerPoint notes from the professor's computer anytime after the class is over. But this very qualitative deterioration, which we need to take into consideration in all these new concepts of virtual learning, <coughs> but with all the limitations, but it is a new venture, 
a good venture in the, because there are limitations on the part of universities like uh, uh, financial constraints and manpower shortage. All, of, all the vice chancellors agree that we also from the university, we know 50% of the faculty, the shortage is there. But to go beyond the classrooms and to reach the extension functionaries and the farmers, we need to join this. We will already on behalf of the vice chancellor, I promise we'll be supporting the consortium, but we have to uh, consider all these points before we launch this great program. Thank you so much.